Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. Welcome back to our recipes, videos, and welcome back to our little cozy kitchen. Today, I will be sharing with you because a couple of you reminded me on Instagram how much you guys loved the... It's actually one of our best watched videos of these series, you know, the hot air fryer series and the cooking videos. How much you guys loved the Moroccan roasted chicken uh, recipe. So I'm gonna do it once more and a little bit simplified this time. So this is the simplified version of that video. So it's gonna be only about the roasted chicken. So what we need here, of course, is the chicken. I'm not gross you out, so I'm not gonna film it too long. There it is. But before, um, before you start working with the chicken, you really need to clean it thoroughly with fresh water and then with uh, either fresh squeezed lemons or buy one of these bottles of um, ready to use lemon juice and salt. So it's lemon juice and salt and give it a good rub, give it a good, good uh, bath. Clean it thoroughly with, with those two elements in there. Uh, just add as much as you like, just don't do it too long, otherwise the skin is gonna start to fall apart because of the salt and what's in uh, naturally um, existing in the lemon juice. Anyway, so once you've done that with the chicken, that's really important, A, to get rid of the germs, but B, it also enhanced the flavor. That does really enhance the flavor. Once you've done that, the chicken is ready to use. What we're gonna marinate it with is you will find all the measurements exactly in the description, but just for the sake of it now, you're gonna, uh, we're gonna be needing a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of coriander, a little bit of parsley, two big onions, a tiny piece of lemon, just a little piece. Uh, we're gonna be needing a little bit of black uh, pepper powder, a little bit of paprika powder, a little bit of ginger powder, a little bit of cumin powder, and I always like to add just a tiny bit of the uh, smoked paprika powder. A pinch. A pinch. Oh, and you also need two cloves of garlic. This amount you can use, yeah, I know, we tried to be a little bit uh, cut down on the garlic. You can do this amount on a chicken up to one kilogram. So, uh, what, you, what we just saw, I don't know if it's one kilogram, I forgot that our Turkish butcher always has little, uh, chickens that are a little bit small on the small side, but let's just hope that he will deliver the right amount of turkey that we ordered at him. He always does usually. So anyway, first, it's really easy. This is one of the easy things about the Moroccan roasted chicken is all these ingredients that I have here, all these ingredients that I just shared with you, I'm gonna put them together in a kitchen machine and just blend them together. And that's the marinade for the chicken. So let's do that. So there are our ingredients, all of them like I listed them in the description box below. Don't forget about the oil, about 60 milliliter of olive oil goes in here. Okay, so let's fix them and this will be the, ma uh, the marinade that uh, we will use to rub the chicken in with, with this, rub it in, like really good. there it is you guys this smells so so good it smells so so good love it so i took only what i needed i took only the amount that i needed um for this chicken this is not a big chicken so it was about um you know uh, a handful of this sauce that i have right here maybe a hand, handful and then a half it's more than enough just rub it in, massage the chicken with it, inside and outside, but also between this breast skin. Just to do it as you would do, for example, with Thanksgiving or Christmas turkey, when you make the, the herbal butter. So do that. If anything is left in whatever you bowl, you're doing this, just, you know, uh, uh, scrap it all together and then add it in the, in the chicken, inside the chicken. So, this works best, especially you can do this, you can just continue and then bake the chicken as you would see in the rest of the video or, you know, prepare. But this works the best if you were to leave this, if you would give the, the, the chicken the chance between one night 
till 24 hours to absorb all that you smeared on it. So since I am um, not in a hurry, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna wrap it in the, the plastic that we use to wrap food in to keep it fresh. I don't know the English word for it, I'm sorry. And that's what I'm gonna do. And then I'm gonna add it in the fridge for until tomorrow. So I will, I will be preparing it tomorrow, but you guys will see the rest of course in the video. The rest of this, I'm gonna do, uh, put in a container and also add it into the fridge because we will be using this tomorrow. This is what will give us the sauce. You can look at this, at this Moroccan recipe as the turkey and the gravy. So this is uh, the chicken that we roast and this will be more or less the gravy that we'll end up with. So it's gonna be delicious. One of my favorite recipes in the Moroccan cuisine. Uh, this is something that you make when you have guests or when you have some sort to celebrate. So this is, yeah, it's way up there in the list. This is one of these dishes that you do. Okay, so and you can make it as crazy as you want, but this is the basis that I give you. This is the core of this recipe. And then you can add whatever side dishes you do, like we do in the Moroccan kitchen, or you can add, you know, to decorate it, once it's uh, completely roasted and everything, you can just add fresh um, roasted almonds or and, uh, uh, hard-boiled eggs and all that and olives and all that you can do all of that but this but that's when you serve it on the plate but this is the basis so you will end up with a roasted chicken and I think the equivalent of what you would call like I said the gravy so it's gonna be delicious very savory sauce um, so anyway see you guys in a bit but for me it will be 24 hours that will have passed when I continue with the next segment so there it is, wrap it like really tight, that way it will, you know, it will be forced to absorb all the, those juices and delicious flavors and aromas. So wrap it like this, it's almost a roulette, and then put it in your fridge. Make sure that it's wrapped really good, that no juices are spilling, uh, coming out of it, so that, um, you know, it will make a mess in the fridge and just put a plate under it and then yeah just put it in the fridge and like i said the rest is already here so that's that's it's already in the kitchen or in the fridge so hey guys welcome back it's the next day the chicken has been 24 hours in the fridge together with the uh the rest of the sauce so there they are oh uh very important to get the chicken out the fridge an hour before you start uh, cooking it. So it needs to be on room temperature. So about an hour for the chicken. So first thing, we're gonna do a little bit, about one tablespoon of oil, one tablespoon, max two tablespoons of oil in there. And then we're gonna um, put the chicken in there together with the rest of this sauce. And then we're not going to add the water right away. We're gonna um, kind of uh, fry the chicken a little bit on very low fire. So on very low fire, try, try to, to, to uh, fry it a little bit and try to keep uh, turning it. Okay, so in there. Just be careful not to burn your fingers, but try to, to, to keep turning it, you know, on, both, on, on all the sides of the chicken for about maybe five, six or seven minutes on low fire. Um, so yeah, that's it. And then after that, we're gonna add the water and then even with the water, when the water starts to cook, to boil, then we're gonna continue turning the chicken on all the sides. I'm sorry, Mike is busy on the background trying to refill the cat's food. Uh, so then, and then after that, we're just gonna put the lid on it and then let it simmer until the, the, the chicken meat is done, but not falling apart. Just be careful not to reach that point. So guys, just to be clear, there's the oil. Wait for it to warm up a little bit, and then first add the chicken. Start to fry the chicken. Now, fry the chicken. Not really fry it, but you know what I mean. Yeah, just fry it in this little bit of oil on all the sides for about five minutes, okay? Just making sure that you get this. And then after that, first five minutes with just the chicken in there on low fire. After uh, So when the, the oil is a little bit hot, uh, just turn it to the lowest and start doing that and then after five minutes of doing that keep keep flipping the chicken on all the sides only then we're gonna start uh, at this timer 
And then what? When are you going to add the Aunt Jemima? The Aunt Jemima? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Never. And Jemima loops? is not part of this. The Fruit Loops? Not the Fruit Loops, no, nothing. The Fruit Loops? This is maybe for some other American uh, recipe, but this is a Moroccan recipe, so we don't have an Aunt Jemima. Oh, oh and I've been told there is no Aunt Jemima anymore. So, uh, yeah, let's do this, guys. Was she, was she ever real? I don't know if she ever existed. <laughs> anyway, thanks, Aunt uh, yeah, Jemima, for everything. Whoever you are, whatever you are. So on the lowest fire, bake it on all the sides. And once you've done that, then continue. Don't forget to tie the, the sides. So best thing you can do is keep, keep moving the chicken around again on the lowest fire, you guys. The lowest fire. So this is what I'm talking about. Just when it gets rid of that pinkish color, that's enough. And just do that for all the, the sides. I'm trying to be as specific as I can, because some of you ask me to be as specific as I can. <laughs> so I'm sorry if I sound too repetitive. So just do it on this side and then put them on the other side. So continue doing this for about five minutes on the lowest fire. So, like you, like you can see, just when you see that light brownish color in the chicken, add the rest of the sauce. And I would suggest that you, from now on, should use a wooden spoon because we do not want to rip the chicken apart because we need its skin, okay? So now, with this sauce, again, let it fry all together for about another five minutes. Just let it fry a little bit. We still haven't uh, added the water, just like this. But stay on it. So wait until this sauce is starting to, um, you know, cook a little bit as you see right here. And give it a couple of minutes more, and then, which I did, and then we're gonna add the water. Remember, we do not need too much water. This is more than enough. Okay, so it should come up in height till the half of the chicken, because more water means it will have to stay, uh, the sauce will have to stay even longer on the fire to vaporize, to get rid of all the water, because we want a thick sauce to go with the chicken. Okay, so don't overdo it with the water, just something like that. It's more than enough. And just wait for it to, wait for it to boil a little bit. If you need to, you can um, uh, uh, raise the temperature a little bit, wait for the water to boil a little bit. And then after that, turn the fire to, to low and then put a lid on this. And then let the chicken go. Just nice and slow until uh, it's cooked. This, in my opinion, and maybe I'm a little bit biased because this is from uh, the cuisine of my culture, but this, in my opinion, is the best way to grill or roast the chicken because this way you will never be surprised on the table with a chicken that's undercooked because you already cook it and it all, and when you do it like this, you know, you, you massage it with all these herbs, you let it sit for at least 24 hours in the, in the, the fridge, you guarantee that the chicken meat will have enough uh, flavors because nowadays if you will go to, I don't know, a restaurant or some place where they do chicken on uh, 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 on a, one of these spits, is that how you say it, how you call it? Okay, so you know what I mean, where they keep turning them, rotisserie, rotisserie chicken? Yeah, that. Usually it's just the, the, the spices on the surface of the meat of the chicken and not in the meat, so once you've went through the, the crispy um, chicken skin on, on the top, on the surface, and maybe just a little bit of the meat on the top, that's it. The rest of the meat won't have any flavor because they, they, they've done it in a very hasty way. They didn't do it like this. So that's, that's how we prevent the chicken from not having any flavor once you're going to cut into it. 
This is how you do it. Just rub it in with all kind of herbs, if you have a nice recipe, and always let it sit for 24 hours, because the chicken meat really needs to suck it, suck all those herbs in, absorb that. That's what, what guarantees you, you a very flavorful chicken meat. So do that. Then, to guarantee yourself so that you won't be surprised once you serve this to your guests that the chicken meat is undercooked, uh, usually around the joints, you know, where the joints happen, so the thighs or whatever happens, sometimes it can surprise you with being undercooked. So the only way to prevent that is to cook the chicken like this with all its herbs in the water, steam it, make sure that it's cooked, the meat is cooked, nothing to surprise you about that. And then just to finish it off, just to finish it off once it's cooked and you've checked that, um, brush some little melted butter on top of it and then add it in the oven just to make, to give it that finishing touch of a roasted chicken flavor. Then at least you'll be guaranteed that the chicken is cooked and you're just gonna put it in there just to get a nice crust, nice goldish crust. So that's what we're doing right here. Anyway, so the water is cooking, which means I'm gonna put the temperature to low and add the lid on it and stay on it. Keep turning it, keep, keep turning the chicken. So I just flipped the chicken. The first 20 minutes just finished, the timer went off. It smells delicious. So now I'm gonna, I just flipped it on the other side, put the lid on it and let it go for another 20 minutes. Hey Siri, set the timer for 20 minutes. 20 minutes, starting now. All right. And another 20 minutes has passed, so it's 20 minutes per side. But remember guys, this is, this is a small chicken. So you really need to just check it for yourself how much you need. Okay, but at least 20 minutes per side. That's what I've done for this little chicken. So now I'm gonna take it out and I'm gonna check the joints. Like I said, I, don't, I, don't, I will never, never accept an undercooked chicken. So I will just check under the, its wings and between the thighs and all that. Well, you know what I mean, just to check if those places, especially those places where meat comes together, the joints as I like to call them. Check them if they're cooked as well. And then I'm gonna continue and I'll show you. If, if, if I'm happy with what I see, I'm gonna take the chicken out and just let the sauce to thicken a little bit. And to help it a little bit move along, maybe sometimes uh, what I do is take a little bit of the water out. So let it rest, let all of the sauce rest on the bottom and then kind of pour a little bit of the water out. So uh, that's what I'm gonna do. Make sure that you have, you know, like a really nice comfortable size plate where you put the chicken on so that you can turn it and Shake it really good. Meanwhile, let the sauce thicken. That's all I can say about that, guys. Just let it thicken. Let it, let it, you know. Uh, you, I guess you can turn the heat a little bit um, higher just to help the water vaporize a little bit more and faster. But the best thing is, the, the thing is I've started too late today, but the best thing is to let it simmer. So yes, I checked with a fork right here, right there. And the fork went through uh, the chicken like, you know, a uh, hot knife through butter. So which means everything is cooked well. If it's cooked here, then it's definitely cooked there as well. See, this is, yeah. Okay. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, now is the time where we're gonna um, put this in the hot air fryer again, or in the oven. You can do it also in the oven, or you can do the whole procedure in the oven. Uh, you know, if you don't have time for all of this to cook it first, or it's not your preference, you can just do the chicken right after you take it out of the fridge, leave it, let, let it sit for an hour, and then just roast it as you would roast, you know, the, your own recipe chicken in the oven or in the hot air fryer. So, but yeah, I'm gonna let it cool off a little bit. And then meanwhile, I'm gonna uh, melt a little bit of butter brush the whole chicken with the melted butter and then add it in the hot air fryer uh, basket. And what I do with the hot air fryer is put it on 160 and then keep flipping it, keep flipping it until it has reached the crispiness and the color you like to see on your roasted chicken. 
So yeah, again, just melted some butter and I just brushed the chicken with it. And now into the hot pot fire it goes, 165 maybe. Let's try first for 15 minutes and then we're gonna do the other side and keep doing it until it's roasted again, like it has reached, uh, until it has reached the state that you like to see again on, like I said, on your roasted chicken. So, once the sauce has thickened and it has the taste that you like and it's soft and it's the way you like it, try to add a little bit of salt if there's not a lot of salt in it and all that. Once all that is done, then add a little bit, this is my secret ingredient, a little bit of hot chili sauce, just a little bit in there, and a little bit of curry sauce, curry ketchup if you happen to have that. Not necessary, it's just my, my twist that I do. And green olives. Green olives is traditional, it's not my secret. And um, you know, let it simmer a little bit more until the green olives are a little bit softer than uh, the used than they were when you got them out of the can. Meanwhile, let's check on the chicken. So I did 15 minutes, still two minutes to go. Oh yeah, look at that. That is perfect. The chicken is ready to entertain you. <laughs> so now let's do the other side. Oh yeah, but seriously guys, it looks delicious and it smells delicious. Look at that. So guys, look at this. Because I've been roasting it in the basket, not in that little pan accessory, but in the basket, this basket, the other side is already roasted as much. But still, I'm gonna brush it with a little bit of butter, like I did with the front. Brush it with a little bit of butter, preferably unsalted butter. That way, you at least try to keep the calories at the minimum. Uh, uh. It has a very dry little butt. Let's give it a nice brush of butter too. And then, there it goes again, but uh, you know, by the look of this, I don't know if it still needs another 15 minutes, but uh, let's just do 10 minutes on 165. Again, it all depends on your little chicken. Is it big, is it medium, is it... So, uh, but yeah, our chicken is little. It was not our intention. This is just what we got, I was surprised. So, but yeah, it will have to do. It's just enough for me and Mike. So let's do another 10 minutes. One thing I need to warn you for guys is that sometimes if you do not wash the chicken thoroughly after you gave it the salt and the citrus bath, sometimes your sauce can be a little bit better, uh, better. So just make sure that you really, really wash the chicken. I don't know if I said that. Wash the chicken thoroughly after you cleaned it with um, citrus juice and salt. If you want to avoid all of that together, then just rub then just clean the chicken with salt rub it in and then uh, clean it wash it and uh, skip the lemon juice because you know I, I don't know how it's just I don't know how to guarantee you that it won't get bitter if if you use too much lemon juice or you didn't wash the lemon juice really really good off the chicken so uh, just to avoid that risk just skip the lemon juice because mine is a little bit better. I love it, but it, it's a little bit better. Just a little bit, tiny bit. If you don't know, then you don't know, but I know. Look at that chicken. Wouldn't you swear it's been on vacation somewhere in Hawaii or maybe Central Africa? Perfect 10. Perfect 10. I give it a 10 for the 10. Get it? So 165 uh, from the 15 minutes that tw 10 minutes from the 10 minutes that I did, I still have three left, but I really don't need them. So we're gonna take the chicken out, maybe just flip it on the other side, see how that looks. If it looks as nice and thin as this, I'll take it out. If not, maybe I will give the other side, um, I don't know, another five minutes till it has this color all around. But I mean, basically it's done when it has reached this. Look okay, at I just touch the meat a little bit. It just it, it, it just rips open when you touch it. So it's really, really done. So there's the chicken. I 
I'm gonna put something on it and let it rest while the fries that I just put in hot air fry, uh, you know, bakes. I need to finish the fries in here, they're here. And that's what we're gonna do, a little bit of fries, a little bit of that chicken and a little bit of that sauce. And what's also traditional is that you uh, cut a hard boiled egg in uh, two pieces and then decorate your plate with on top of this sauce or on top of the chicken, whatever you want. And preferably, I don't feel like doing that, but preferably uh, also a little bit of uh, um, fresh fried almonds. So guys, I thought I'd give you a shot before I cover it with the sauce. Look, this is the sauce. And just cut the egg in two and just put it on there or just scramble it on top. This is my uh, chicken breast and these are the thighs for me. All right, so this is it you guys with the fries. This is it. This is it, they don't do it like this. I just cut the egg in um, too many small pieces but normally you just cut it in two. But there it is. No mayo. No mayo, I forgot the mayo, I'm sorry. I'm happy we have this because we're now in a strict lockdown. There's so many lockdown. Anyway. Uh, happy holidays you guys. I hope you try this. It's really good. I just tasted the chicken meat. It's really flavorful and uh, What can I say? Thank you so much for watching and coming back. If you're new, welcome and we hope to see you again and again. Happy holidays from me and Mike and the cats. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <coughs> hey guys, welcome back to our channel. Thank you so much for joining us here again in one of our, um, uh, in another healthy recipe. What we will be making today? First of all, look at that guys, look at that. Some friends, family from this YouTube channel sent us this stuff all the way from Colorado. Isn't that sweet, isn't that cute? Speaking of healthy recipes, these are mini bags and each bag has only 100 calories, so that's really not bad. It's really not bad. And same goes actually for all this stuff that he sent us. Two wonderful girls. So cute, so sweet, really. Um, anyway, yeah, we said it before and I'm saying it again. It, 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 it's gone crazy with uh, the, the shipping costs, you guys. They paid $100 just to have these shipped from the US to Holland. So it's really, it's getting crazy. It's getting uh, difficult to keep sending stuff to the people you care about. It's, it's just crazy. Anyway, so that's really kind. So we tried to do the whole purpose of this whole video. Stenciling. But I guess these shapes are not deep enough. So uh, this is not gonna work. We won't be able to see anything of these uh, uh, stamps because the cookie is gonna be uh, baking and it's gonna change a little bit. The surface is gonna change. So we won't be able to see anything, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. We now at least uh, can try and see if this dough is just any good, just for the you know for the purpose of making these kind of cookies. So I would say if you want to do this, get something that has shapes that are a little bit more robust and and and, and deeper, like deeper cuts than this. It's really something I didn't think about when I got this one. There it is, brush them with a little bit of egg yolk and then they're going in, uh, stay on them. I cannot tell you how long they should be in there because it depends on the thickness of your dough, what kind of dough and all that. So, but uh, keep checking every 10 minutes at least. You put them in the brat slave. Yeah. So as soon as you you can feel that you can take the cookie off the bottom, you know, you, you can just uh, pull it up a little bit, uh, take a look, see if the bottom is good and then they're good to go. They don't have to be brown, That's just fine. a little bit, just a little bit light goldish. What do you think guys? We made cookies today. 
They smell delicious. It reminded Mike of his childhood cookie recipes. So this is a snowflake. So that's Mike. He's, he's the whitest of us. And this is me. I'm more tanned. So I'm the tanned Christmas tree. This is with a, a cocoa powder through it. And this is the regular one. So that's us. The snowflake and the somewhat tanned tree. So this just arrived today, guys. Uh, first, you know, it has always been the case here in Holland. The employee would send you something around Christmas and it used to be a big box full of all kind of stuff, treats and all that. And, and, and I even had an employee that gave me, yeah, the glory days. I even had an employee that gave me a very classic, very fancy uh, picnic uh, basket. It was really huge and all that. But today, this, this day and age, this is what we get. Now, we say here in Holland, you cannot judge a horse that's been gifted to you. Uh, so, um, I'm happy with it. It's cute. It's cute. It's at least something. It's cute. So we have cheese, nuts, cookie, chocolate, uh, juice, and zero alcohol. Yeah, it's cute. It's cute, you guys. Then, then again, when your employees send you something that's out of space, from outer space then you cannot you cannot complain you just make it up for it so that's what it is chocolate from outer space and we also got these gifts from our friends from the UK and then we got this is one of the gifts that we got from uh, our friends from the US and then we got some other gifts from the US, which we already finished. They were too good uh, from other friends. And from the UK also came these. What do we love? So you know who you are. Thank you so much. And as always, you guys, you really shouldn't have troubled yourself. Honestly, we'll be as, as happy with uh, a card. We love cards, especially this year. I don't know. Those little, little stuff. Um, just a card, you know, all of a sudden has so much meaning. It's because it reminds you of what has been innocent times. Anyway, thank you so much, guys. Again, you know who you are. And we wish you all a very, very happy uh, holiday season. So remember last year we showed you guys what Mike got from his uh, work. The um, work together with this um, place where people that have some sort of a, a handicap work can do this kind of stuff just to keep supporting them. And I just love the idea. So this year, this is what they brought them, what they brought him. This is cake with raisins. These are almond cookies in the shape of a wreath you can put them around the Christmas tree or on the Christmas tree or you can just enjoy them like that this is this is what almond stick almond spices this is I, I, I forgot the name of this little um, strawberries made with I think it's almond paste that it's made with and then you have this cake also good as always yes this is it you know this is what you do around the uh, new year I hope I hope everybody is still getting at least something from their work I know that times are changing and they need to cut down and all that but I hope I hope they keep getting us giving us at least something anyway it's always good always the gesture is always good I was I forgot the name you guys but yeah the strawberries are from marzipan. That's how we call it in Dutch. Marzipan. So, so good. So cute.